Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another Hex Update Saturday for November 23rd, 2013. I'm Jake Freedom. This week we had a lot, uh, a lot announced. First off, the, the one of the bigger announcements was the rest of the invites went out for a total of 100 or 15,000 additional invites, um, including slacker backers. So yes, that means I finally have got to uh, play the game a little bit. Well, at least try to play the game. I haven't been too successful at it yet. Um, as with any <clears throat> invite in the past, it seemed like there had been some issues that cropped up, and then they'd slowly go away, and they'd invite some more people back, and then and then the same issues would come up again. Well, this time here, um, you know, the past priority issue that's been plaguing the game since the beginning has pretty much dictated all the outcomes of the games I've tried to play, and it's, I've only tried to play six or seven games or something, you know, somewhere along those lines, nothing massive or anything like that. Um, but the, on the evening of the uh, the big invites, and when the invites were sent out there, I mean, it was almost impossible even to get into the game since the uh, servers were so overwhelmed and overloaded. Um, but I think this was planned. Um, some speculate that CZE did this so they could they pulled some of their servers offline to see how the servers that they had online how they would handle the load, and so they could better understand what they needed to do in the future as far as scaling um, and for resources and whatnot. Now, like I said, it's speculation. Who knows if that was the issue, if that was the case. I'm not sure. But yeah, it was it was difficult to even get into the game. And when you got into the game, it, it seemed to you know bug out quite a bit, whether or not it'd be the past priority issue or it could, you know if it would have been like a, during the coin flip, I've had some games just stop working right there. Um, not exactly sure why. Um, the uh, uh, engineers have have s come up with some of an idea of why some of the games have stopped working at the coin flip, and that was due to they added a bunch of new cards um, into this week's patch, which we'll get to in just a minute. And some of the cards there, since they were the old version, they weren't working correctly until they you know pulled that card out and then put the new one in. So that was one of those the issues there with the coin flip. Um, other than that, the game the game looks it looks pretty good. You know, it's uh it's polished. And uh, other outside of the uh, um, few issues that it has as far as playing the game and trying to actually get through an entire game. But we'll show you some gameplay here in just a minute. Let's go through uh, go 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 through some of the patch notes that we got. And this patch was rolled out on the 21st, a couple of days ago, and it contained a lot of changes. We won't go through all the changes here since there's so many of them, um, but I'll put a link in the description, and you can go check it out and take a look for yourself there. Um, let's see. First off, we'll start with a couple new known issues. Um, at minimum resolution, Shards of Fate is difficult to use. The UI uh, portion is obscure. Um, I would agree with this. I don't know if it's a new known issue though, but the cards themselves are very difficult to read if you have a uh, a low res a low resolution. Um, it's because it makes the game so small and the card the card text isn't the greatest. You always have to zoom in on the card to be able to read what it is if you don't know what the card is by heart. Now, as time goes on, you know you'll get more accustomed to what the cards are. You won't need to actually look at them all the time. So I think that'll go away. But um, for new people, it could be an issue. Uh, another new known issue is Prime Blood Orb of Brutality is not functioning. Um, in general, they they claim they fixed the coin flip, so now you have a chance to win in all situations. I disagree with that one. The coin flip is odd, <laughs> to say the least. It seems like the coin flip works, but it always shows the winner being the, uh, like if you play against the AI, it always shows the AI winning. Even though you might be able to go, you might get to go first. I think that's just a bug in the actual animation itself. Another fix that they uh, did: cards in the graveyard are now viewable. Um, and with the chat, using the up arrow keys will allow you to cycle through your last chat, last 20 chat entries. Not really a big deal there. Edit slash commands for social features: uh, backslash friend, backslash ignore, backslash unignore. Um, now you can chat on the home page. Speaking of the chat box, it's annoying. I do not like it. You can't get rid of it. It's always there. You have to like, make it as small as you possibly can, and then shove it off to the side. I'll show you. I'll give you. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. I'll just pull the game up. Okay, here's the uh, here's the chat box. There's absolutely no way to get rid of this. You can make it bigger. You can make it smaller. That's as small as you can make it. 
and then you just have to throw it off to the side to get it out of your way. I think that's completely annoying. They should make they should be able to you should be able to close this uh, box down and see uh, to get it to get it out of your way. And now we've got an issue here where I've somehow drug the sliders out of the actual box itself. So there are still some bugs in the actual game, but yeah, they need to make a way to to actually close that chat box. Um, to get out of people's way because not everybody always wants to chat. I know it's a nice feature when you have friends and stuff online that you need to speak with them and it's always up, but just give us a way to close it and uh, we'll be good. Uh, let's see here. Cards. They did a lot of changes to some cards. We'll go over a few of them here. Um, created created cards triggered and continuous... What is the, How did they word that? Created cards triggered and continuous fixes now work correctly. One example of this is a Zoom Grand Concubunny. Um, cards will now reflect the correct resource cost regardless of zone. And let's see here. Ancient Sentinel has been removed from the game to make room for the Spear Clift Cloud Knight. I haven't used all the cards. I've only been kind of just playing around with some of the demo decks that they give you. I think I've been playing around with the Dwarf demo deck. Um, I don't think they're, the demo decks are very good as far as functionality, but I don't know. I've only been, able to, I think the highest turn I've got to in one of the games is turn six, so I haven't really got to, you know, go through the deck to actually see how well it works, how much um, cohesiveness it has, and how well it uh, how well it works together. So I can't say much about the actual cards there. Um, let's see what else we got here. Ash Harpy now reads Flight Speed and Rage 4. Battle Beetle now reads Socketable Minor. This troop gets light this turn. Uh, like I said, there's a whole bunch of card changes here. I'm just kind of hitting some of the, uh, the the big ones here. Demented Demolisher now reads uh, three, sacrifice this troop, avoid all resources from your deck. Um, let's see here. They also made some changes to Escalation. Um, escalation used to be exponential, and now it's... Oh, how did they, how did they word that? It's more linear now, so it, it, it the curve of escalation is kind of gradual instead of just ra it doesn't ramp up so fast. Uh, some people like it, some people don't. Um, it all depends on who you are and if you're a big escalation player. Oh, let's see here. What else we got? Um, Gas Troll now reads Crush. When you play a Ruby card, this troop gets permanent plus one attack, plus one defense. Goblin Cooking Pot now reads. Uh, it's a basic... Uh, card basic uh two cost i think that means two cost they ha they put them in here so odd uh sacrifices artifact to deal one damage to the opposing champion see they kind of have some weird text on these cards here like th this one here says deal one damage to each opposing champion so i'm guessing that these cards are created um with I with when they kept they got to keep in mind that Maybe you'll not just be playing one person in the future, but you'll be playing like multiple people, maybe in more of a PvE style, where there's you know three or four champions out there. So this card here will deal one damage to each of those champions. That's what I can guess because they they just they word it odd, oddly like that. Um, Hex Engine now reads attack attack uh, gain um, um, gain two oh gain two gain two gain two charges. Sorry, gain two charge. Um, let's see here. Um, the Mystic Spirit Walker now reads when this troop attacks. Choose target troop you control. Uh, the next time that troop troop would would be dealt damage. This game prevent it. It's pretty much you know you can attack, but next time you're dealt damage, you can't. You won't take it. Um, what else we got here? A lot of card changes. Lots and lots of card changes here. Um, Wall of Corpses now reads, Defensive. Defensive means the card can only defend, it cannot attack. This troop gets plus defense equal to the combi combined, combined defense of troops in your graveyard. Kind of a neat card. Uh, let's see, now they added a bunch of new cards, too. Some of the new cards are Shards of Fate, uh, Runic Monolith, um, Spirit Cliff Cloud Knight, which was mentioned before, Stone Skin, Judgment, Stone Claw, uh, Windborn Acolyte, Daring Swordman, Scrap Welder, um, Soul Marble. <coughs> Let's see, there's about there's about 15 cards there, I believe that they uh, they added, and they did some changes to the actual champions too. Changes the way that things read on them. Uh, let's see, One Eye One Eye Open <coughs> now reads. That's uh, a, a diamond. 
Diamond Shard. It's a basic card. It costs three. Ready each troop you control. Uh, running Deer now reads Wild Shard. Basic. Costs four. Gain five health. Uh, let's see here. Lionel Flynn now reads. It's a ruby. Basic. Uh, target troop gets permanent plus three attack, plus zero defense. And let's see here. What else they got? Um, Wyatt, the, Wyatt the Sapper now reads. Draw a card. I believe what they're talking about here are the charges that the actual champions get. Let's go ahead and take a look. So let's just go into uh, build the deck here. And... And go to our champions. So let's take a look at oh, which one? Let's take one eye open. Where's that one at here? One eye open. All right, ready each troop you control. So if we go. I think that's what the actual charge is. Yes, that is what their charge. That what the actual champion can do. Every um, like for example, the one I've been the one I've played with the most is this guy right here. Uh, he takes a, a minimum of three, and when you do his charge, he creates a worker bot and puts it into play. It's a 1-1 one, one worker bot. So it looks like they just did some changes to the actual um, charge text and what the, how they read there. Oh, uh, Let's see, what else do we got? They did a bunch of changes to, the, to some gems. Uh, let's see, for example... Prime Ruby of Insanity now reads, when this troop deals damage to an opposing champion, each champion discards their hand and draws three cards. That's pretty cool. Uh, Sapphire of Mischief now reads, you may play this troop at any time. You could play a quick action. Okay. Uh, quick actions can be played uh, when you're countering something, for example, on the chain, on the stack, on the, cha uh, on the side of the of the uh, game itself when something happens it goes onto the chain and you can play it then um, to either buff or get rid of something that's out on the playing field that's going to be buffed um, all depends on how you actually want to do that so with the gems I haven't got to uh, experiment with the gems at all except I've just been trying to play the game see how the game how the, how the flow of the game works and uh, and whatnot and I haven't been too successful at that but, uh, like I said, with all these changes in this new patch here, uh, I'm not going to go through them all. Like I said, I'll go ahead and put a link in the description so you can go ahead and check it out for yourself um, to see what was all changed there. So now what we can do, we can actually just uh, kind of look through the look through the uh, the game itself here. This is your this is your main home screen, and some of the features here aren't all enabled yet. Um, some of these up here don't work. Um, which can be expected. I mean, card manager works. Um, that's kind of where we just were. You got your home button. Um, play. Play now um, is going to go out, and you're going to look for an opponent to play, not play the AI. Um, so we'll go ahead and just fire up a game here, play the AI. And when you do this, you can select the decks that you've created. We have, like, the demo decks here. And this is very hard to read. They'll need to change that. Uh, I believe somebody else commented on the forum. Um, about how hard this was to actually read. So like I said, I've been playing around with the demo, the demo dwarf deck here. So we'll go ahead and uh, use that one, and we'll challenge the AI here. Maybe we can uh, actually get through a game. I won't make you watch the entire thing. We'll see how far we can actually go. Here's the coin flip, and it always lands that way. So the AI always goes first. Well, it always appears it looks like the AI goes first. So we'll see. <clears throat> and we get our hand dealt, and it is awful all resources and one card that costs seven so we do not want to keep that we're gonna draw again and see what we get this time and we're gonna get um, some two costs and one cost a couple shards not the greatest but uh, we'll go ahead and keep that and play with that and see what we can uh, see what we can do so it's my turn see obviously we got to we didn't win the coin toss like I said I think the graphic is bugged but we gotta go first so we'll go ahead and go ahead and play play a resource here. And we can actually play this guy since he takes one resource and he has a threshold of one ruby, in which we just play that. So when an artifact just play under the control, this troop deals one damage each opposing champion. So as you can see, the card text is difficult to read and you know, if you moused over them and then kind of made it a little bigger, it'd be great. Other than that, you have to click on it to zoom in on it to to read it. Like I said, in the future, that won't be necessary because you'll get you'll get the cards 
um, memorized and whatnot. So we'll go ahead and play this guy here. So he goes up onto the chain there, and uh, um, the AI couldn't respond, so he just passed priority back to me, and we're going to let that go, and we're going to continue. And now we're in my second main phase. If you're not familiar with how the phases now the turns actually work, um, I think in my previous video or maybe one before that, um, they brought out with a they brought out a quick start guide, and it kind of explains how the phases work and what you can do in each one of those phases. There, um, the second main phase is basically just like your first phase. So, like if I didn't play a resource card in my my um, first main phase, I could play that resource in my second phase as long as I didn't play it in the first. And you can play anything you want in your second main phase, depending on what you uh, how your game style works, how you want to play it. So now, uh, let's see, it's going to be Champion's turn, the AI's turn. So he throws something out on the, uh, on the chain there. We'll take a look at it. It says, as at the start of your turn, create two Ancestral Specters and shuffle them into your deck. So basically this card here at the start of his turn is going to create two of these every time. They're going to get shuffled into his deck. And he's going to be able to pull them out. I'm guessing it's going to be he's going to try to ramp up, be ramping up for something there. I can't do anything with that. I can't uh, counter it, so let's let it go. And then his second main phase, I he didn't do anything, we'll pass the priority back. And this is the a lot of passing the priority. Um if you're familiar at all with um <coughs> physical card games, you know, there's a lot of turns going on and it, it's not a big deal to say, Okay, yep, can't do anything, can't do anything. You know, you can you can actually just pass priority all the way through the end of the turn. In the digital world it's a little bit harder to do that. They are toying around with some ideas of hey, you're just gonna pass priority for the rest of this turn. Um, so we don't have to always click pass priority. Maybe we'll come up with that. Maybe they won't. So well, let's see, my turn. And any if you, anybody's familiar with any of these types of card games, um, you'll be well on your way on how to play. I myself have not played many card games. Um, uh, back in the early '90s, mid '90s, somewhere around there, there was a tr Star Wars game I played quite a bit. I don't remember it anymore, but it was a long time ago. Um, other than that, I have experience with Hearthstone, Pokemon, and that's about it. Alright, so Bombsmith is a troop, Dwarf Mage. When this troop enters play, it may deal one damage to a target troop. I think that sounds like a good idea. We'll play him. Would you like to activate this ability? Yes. So we can actually target his troop immediately and kill it and it goes to the graveyard. Not a very exciting animation, but that's okay. So now I am I'm on my attack stage here. So we click the card we want. It's always going to attack the champion. I haven't found any instances where you can actually attack other cards outside of like what I just did there. Um but so you have to you always attack the champion and your your opponent will block and that's how you can do damage to other cards directly. Now the cards themselves, you can do um, indirect damage to the troops on the field um, and whatnot. So we'll go ahead and attack. He can't block it. Pass priority back. Sign the damage there. And now we're in my second main phase. Can't do anything, so we're just going to continue. And now the start of his turn. Like I said, I won't have you uh, sit through this entire game. I might actually be able to get through it, though. I'll just uh, skip through some of this so you don't have to... Oh, what do we got here? When this troop deals damage to the opposing champion, its master gets permanent plus one, plus one. So that would be this guy. He's going to get plus one, plus one. Unfortunately, I don't have anything to hit him with, so to get rid of that, if I had some type of like a burn or a snipe that could deal at least three damage, I could target this card here, so then this buff wouldn't happen. But I don't, so it's going to get buffed. And it looks like the past priority bug has reared its ugly head again. I thought we were do we were doing so well. We got to turn four, and I I thought this game was actually going to complete. Unfortunately, it did not. Um, bummer. Uh, I believe I probably would have been beat anyway. I, I'm not I'm not good. In, I don't I don't know the cards well enough yet. Like I said, <laughs> I can barely play the game. So um, I'll be honest. I I don't really know exactly what I'm doing yet. Um, said it's 
it's exciting though. I mean, I've, I have an understanding of how the card games work and all that good stuff. So, um, as time goes on, I'll definitely get better. But it looks like here's the past priority bug, and we can't do anything now. And there used to be you could use like your end key, and then they programmed um, that out so you couldn't because what they want people to do is bring up the concede window by pressing escape and then report bug game. So we'll click that and now we're back here. So that's a little bit of gameplay um, of Hex Shards of Fate and uh, hopefully uh, gives you a better idea of what the actual game looks like instead of me just giving these updates and not being able to actually see the game. So other than that, that's pretty much all for this week. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, go ahead and click subscribe, leave a comment if you'd like, and I'll have a video for you soon. Thanks for watching.